Coming up, the new Elvia V2 from Turner CNC. I get the Microtech Stitch Ram Lock and 10 great knives for urban survival. Number eight will shock you. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. To the show, my favorite comment from this past week was from my new spirit animal. This is Bad Dog ID4 PO. Uh, he says on my Cold Steel Taipan Dagger video, I have this knife in CPM 3V up here in the Rocky Mountains. This is part of my everyday carry along with two Hellcat 9mm sidearms, a Leatherman, a CRKT Big Dog pocket knife, and a Bic lighter, a ferro rod, and a flashlight. You city slickers wouldn't understand. The number one important piece of gear is your Bic lighter. You wouldn't last three days in the mountain wilderness without it. This knife is for wolves, mountain lions, and wolverines that will jump on you before you can even draw your sidearm. I will never go anywhere here in the mountains without this gear unless I'm in an area where it's illegal. And I got to say, um, bad dog, that's pretty cool. I, As a city slicker, um, I love hearing how people actually use some of this gear that I love and love to collect especially the, the cold steel Taipan, uh, to think that someone carries that on them for self-defense against mountain lions and wolverines. Um, well, it warms the cockles of my heart. So thanks for uh, leaving that um, comment and kind of letting me know what your lifestyle is up there in the Rocky Mountains. It could not be more opposite than mine. And uh, well, I admire it. And your whole line about the Bic lighter, I totally get. And I was wondering uh, how people... In, in your case, uh, who live in the Rocky Mountains and live and die by their, their gear, uh, Bic lighter versus Zippo. Why a Bic lighter over a Zippo? I'm just uh, curious if you have any, any thoughts on that. All right. Thank you, Bad Dog ID 4 po for commenting on this video. And thank you one and all for watching over this past week, commenting, liking, and subscribing. All of that said, let us get now to a pocket check. In my front pocket today, totally in keeping with my recent uh, obsession with Microtech knives, I had my tried and true Ultratech double edge partially serrated. Uh, this is an awesome knife. It was made in August of 2017. <clears throat> 817 is my birthday. I have an affinity for the number 817. I looked it up and there is a very, very uh, poignant Bible verse here. Let me see if I can get this here. Uh, and uh, oh, oh, where is it? It's dated right here on the clip. It's the only uh, billboarding I like on knives or on Microtech knives. There we go. My gosh. So 817, I just realized uh, I have an affinity for that number, and I uh, that's when this was made. Um, I love the dagger shape. The dagger blade is so great on these knives. And this one is stiff, but I've been really, really working it and uh, trying to get it less stiff. And I don't think that's happening. I think what's happening is that my hands are getting, my thumb is getting a little bit stronger. Uh, this, um, I love the the um, uh, the anodizing on this. I did drop it the other day and it received a little bit of a ding, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. And uh, well, the more I carry it, the more it'll wear in and uh, look sumptuous now i am not a huge fan of out the fronts but i have a couple uh two of them and they are microtex and i wouldn't mind checking out their new one that's coming out uh, that is supposed to be zero play that's an exciting one uh okay next up in my left pocket well it kind of volleyed around actually today uh was the jack wolf knives gunslinger jack this is the second coming if you will of the gunslinger jack uh this knife was so popular when it came out. Uh, Jack Wolf Knives' first folding, flipping, locking, um, modern, traditional, in the truest sense of the word, because it's got this modern setup with the locking and the flipping and whatnot, but it really is this traditional gunstock jack pattern. It's just larger. It's got about a 3.2-inch blade, <clears throat> so right there in that uh 
perfect EDC zone for most people. Um, and in this case, ironwood, just beautiful ironwood covers. I'm so, um, I just, I love these. Uh, enamored, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, they have a knurled titanium pattern. They have um uh, smoky purple kieranite, and then they have two different carbon fibers. Uh, one is a golden, um, golden carbon fiber that looks like wood in pictures, just awesome knives. The flipping action on this one is even um, more free and fall shutty, if you will, than the first version, which had exquisite uh, flipping action as well. Uh, let's see, next up. I had on my belt the 302 from Aaron Bieber Knives, the 302 uh, with the Sukamaki wrap. This is in Magna Cut and um, just a really, really beautiful blade, as you can see, kind of blending uh, with that Sukamaki wrap and sort of a, a um, it's sort of a blend between a Kiridashi and a and a clip point or or buoy blade here, um, and it's. It's very uh, utility oriented with that tip down low and then that long, slight belly, but it, it, it acts as a, as a straight edge there. Uh, very light, and you put this on your belt. I like to wear this in the waistband, uh, just right up front um, in appendix, and I can draw it in reverse grip so easily with that, uh, with that wrap. Look at, look at how the alternating peaks and valleys there create a place for your for your hand to grab in and actually the way he negotiated this wrap through that choil is masterful he being aaron bieber uh, i've been following him for a long time and then introduced myself to him at blade show 2023 and it ends up we went to the same art school and and uh lived in the same area uh in philly for a while and it was just uh pretty cool to meet him never never knew him in school but years later to to uh, fall in love with his knives and then and then meet him in person and then have him on the show <laughs> really great but this knife uh, all of that aside is really uh, a great everyday carry um small fixed blade it is uh classy looking very well made uh definitely deadly but um you know for self-defense if you needed it but chances are it's just uh the most or one of the most handy fixed blade knives you'll ever put on your belt and forget uh lastly on me this was more for emotional support than anything was the number 86 I haven't carried this in a long time great eastern cutlery 86 um jack knife such a beautiful knife i bought one for me and one for my brother when these were out in let me check the date The date is always here on one of the blades. So this is the number. Let's get it in focus. Number 86. Uh, number, uh, let's see. The primary blade is number one, which means a, a clip point. Uh, the number two there means two blades. And then that one nine is 19. This was made in 2019. And uh, so that year, that was five years ago, I got one for me and one for my brother because it's because of my brother that I am absolutely in love with tortoise shell. Uh, my brother Vic has always been into tortoise shell. I think he got his love from the pick guards of Stratocasters and Telecaster guitars. Um, but he, uh, you know, he had horn rim glasses with that and various things with that, uh, with that uh, tortoise shell on it. So uh, made me think of him. I got him one, got me one. And it is probably my uh, second favorite Great Eastern Cutlery knife right behind my number 15 Farmer, uh, Farmer Boy's knife. Uh, <clears throat> that clip point blade is great, big and long. It reminds me of a um, Sheffield clip point. And then that uh, sheep's foot blade, nice and big and useful. That's what I love about Great Eastern Cutlery. Their secondary blades are big and useful, like pen blade or um, sheep's foot. Really, really great knife. Great action on this. I love the Great Eastern Cutleries, and I, I, I've been neglecting them recently for all these modern traditionals i've been into so i gotta dive back in and uh take advantage of my awesome gec collection all right that's what i had in my pocket what did you have in your pocket let me know drop it down there in the comments um of course uh you give me inspiration and uh yeah so let's have it down below again it was the ultratech it was the gunslinger 
It was the 302 and it was the 86 on me today. All right, uh, coming up tomorrow on, if you're watching this, the day this is dropping, but so coming up on uh, the third Thursday of March this year, uh, we have our Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway. Of course, that's March 21st. Uh, and it's the Tepe Designs Tucson TS-394. And I, I'm sorry, is this the 394? I always mix up these numbers. It's the 175. My apologies to all. This is the 175. I keep uh, messing up the number. Uh, a, a beautiful, broad Tonto, Americanized Tonto with a very thin grind. Uh, right behind the edge, it is wickedly thin. Very, very sharp. You got flat grinds on both the tip and on the main. You've got this incredible sharpening choil. It's like uh, it's like he was taking notes right from a uh, a Neves knives uh, video on that choil. Very well done. Really great thumb studs on this, and the button lock is awesome. <clears throat> it has this uh, ever widening handle, which reminds me a little bit of a Strider. I always I like to bring that out for reference. It just widens out and uh, so makes it easy on the hands on any sort of uh, long use task because you're not gripping something real thin. So, uh, But it has this nice bulbous round end, which makes it comfortable in pocket. And uh, man, I, I love this knife. This was donated to the channel by this old sword. I can't do it with my left hand for some reason. Uh, this old sword blade reviews uh, donated this to the channel and I really appreciate it. So I look forward to passing this on to you. This is a hard one to let go because I always admired this one. I just think it's a really cool knife. All right. So this is to a gentleman junkie, one lucky gentleman junkie uh, coming up here on the 21st of March, 2024. <clears throat> Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some knife life news and then a couple new ones in my collection. And then, of course, we'll get to the main topic of the day about uh, urban survival knives. Uh, but before we get there, I just want to uh, I just want to say, if you like the show, you want to help support it, you can do so on Patreon. You can scan the QR code on the screen, and uh, and that'll take you right there. Uh, but one of the perks of being a uh, gentleman junkie or or a uh, top tier Patreon uh, patron is you are enrolled monthly, if you will, just automatically put into a knife drawing and. Um, win it like it or not you win it you get it you can do whatever you want with it but uh, it's our way of saying thank you uh so check us out on the knifejunkie.com slash patreon again it's the knifejunkie.com slash patreon among this week's specials at knives ship free the zero tolerance 0006 has an epic blade based on a full tang of cpm 3v tool steel the blade is bead blasted and protected by clear Cerakote, and the handle features textured G10 scales with a steel guard and end cap. Designed by Jason Knight and executed with excellent build quality, the Knight Elements Kukri V2 Ultra features a black titanium frame, green G10 front scale, and iconic Kukri blade profile. And the Gunslinger Jack from Jack Wolf Knives is a front flipper with a classic gunstock handle. It's loaded with features like CPM S90V Super Steel, ceramic bearings, and an integral titanium frame lock. Get these deals and other great specials from Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I'm always excited to see a new Topps knife. Uh, they come out with numerous models every year. I just love their stuff. This new one uh, looks pretty good to me, too. It's called the Topps Arnado. It's a collaboration with a Forged in Fire winner, Josh Navarrete. And uh, look at it. man! It's a beautiful, all-purpose, outdoor uh, workhorse of a knife. Uh, you've got six and a half inches of, uh, as, as per usual, 1095, awesome blade steel, uh, tried and true for years and years and years. Uh, and Tops has been using it, uh, for years and years and years. Great outdoor steel, uh, keeps a great edge, easy to sharpen, uh, very tough, meaning it takes impact, uh, well, uh, in this case, and in most four tops, it's coated with a corrosion resistant coating. Uh, nowadays with Tops. Uh, I knew I know that when you have a, a knife recoded, if you send it back into them, you have your choice of many, many different coatings. 
Uh, but in this case, I, I believe it's their uh, black traction coating uh, off the shelf, that is. So it's a full tang knife uh, with micarta handles. It's the usual tops recipe. Uh, beautiful Kydex sheath with a dangler loop there. Uh, those do come in handy, uh, even though I don't like how um, the knife might swing around and bang around if you're being very, very active. But if you're getting in and out of vehicles or on and off of tractors and stuff like that, uh, those dangler sheaths work very well. Uh, this is available now, so go check it out if this is your uh, your type of knife. Um, it is the Arnado, a collaboration with Forge of Fire winner Josh Navarrete from Tops Knives. All right, next up, uh, from Best Tech, you know the, the Bouquet series. The Bouquet series, um, series of knives designed by Ostap Hell, great designer out of Poland. Uh, and he has been inspired by all of these exotic flowers and plants out there in the world to, uh, in the, that inspiration has gone into these knife designs in the Bouquet. The latest is the, so oh, I have a knife avalanche over here. Uh, the, this latest one is the Sambach. Stambach is a flower, a jasmine flower, uh, a type of jasmine flower. And that is what inspired this somehow. And uh, I guess it's the beautiful flowing lines. I love Ostop Hell's designs. And here we have uh, we have something that is bigger than most of the bouquet series. Uh, in this case, 3.6 inches of, for the first time ever, from Bestec Magna Cut Steel, a steel you may have heard of recently. Uh, first one from Best Tech. Uh, this is different uh, in that it's got uh, a whole range of anodization um, uh, colors and different inlays. Uh, you can even get um, you can even get that uh, inlay with uh, what is that stuff called uh, Mokutai. So this is the first time. This is a you know one in a series. So uh, uh, kind of same but different. And yet it has all of these new things on it. So uh, go check that out. It's the Best Tech Sambach by Ostop Hell and Best Tech. And uh, I like it because it's big and flowy and beautiful. Uh, would I get it? Will I get it? I probably won't. That's the problem with Knife Life News. We look at so many cool things and I think that would be great in my collection, but you can't have them all. Next up is another case of you can't have them all because I have a bunch of these and I have no plans to get any others because I, I rarely use them. Uh, but they are handy as hell. And those are open L knives. This is the open L number eight. But this one's called the open L number eight forge because it's a tip of the hat to the forging process uh, for knives. Uh, this one comes in the same XC90 uh, high carbon steel, which is very similar to 1095. But in this case, uh, they gave it that brute de forge look. Uh, where it looks like it's been hammered out and they've left the hammer, um, you know, marks and only sharpened the edge. I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, dark handle, dark uh, vibro lock, vibro lock, that's the um, collar lock thing there. Uh, but this is a limited edition. They're limiting it to 6,000 pieces. And uh, for a company that makes a knife so inexpensive and yet uh, so tried and true and, and, um, vaunted in the knife world 6000 is a pretty limited run so if you're interested in this uh, keep your eyes peeled for it uh, i am not sure they say it's available soon i'm not sure exactly what that means but if you're an open l collector you better get on this one all right uh, lastly is not a knife it is a watch but it's a watch that has some knife connections, two knife connections, as a matter of fact. This is a collaboration of two micro brands, one called Notus, uh, which is uh, pretty well liked in the micro brand uh, world, uh, from what I read. And they create sports watches. And then the other is Raven. Uh, they make tool watches, very similar to Rolex and Tudor, that kind of styling. Um, but you may have heard of Raven on this show because um, that is the uh, the micro brand that steve of uh of finch designs steve laughlin of of finch knife co uh, that's his watch company and you know how all finch knives most finch knives have the shield with the loom well that is directly inspired by steve laughlin's uh raven and uh, watch company uh so this is raven and notice coming together and the other uh the feature that they borrow in this knife from the sort of edc and i would say a uh, gun world is Cerakote on the bevel. They're Cerakoting on the bevel and it does uh, on the bezel. I'm sorry, mixing my 
knife and uh, watch terms here, but it has a really, really nice look and obviously will be super durable on the bezel. And the bezel is the part that receives a lot of action. So uh, that Cerakote is a great place to have it. The case, it's a 39 uh, and a half millimeter case. So uh, not as big as a lot of watches are these days, but uh, kind of in that sweet spot. The movement is the Miyota 9075 automatic, uh, which just uh, in passing, I've heard a lot of uh, when watching um, like Baldessari videos and other watch videos. It's a GMT, which means uh, you can um, you can uh, set the movement to track time in two different time zones, which is cool. And it's waterproof up to 20 millimeter or 20 not millimeters uh 20 meters and it's 875 bucks so under a thousand bucks it's available now uh i am told that in the watch in the watch world that is a very very good price especially for coming from two uh great micro brands coming together like that so if you're into watches and you like these kind of uh two knife connections with Finch, Steve Laughlin's, uh, Finch's Steve Laughlin and the Cerakote. Check that out. I wish I had the disposable income to be a watch collector because I love watches. Um, and that one would really suit my needs for something super cool. Uh, all right, we are going to be uh, coming up on on the state of the collection, and I'm going to show off some some new ones that I'm, I'm really, really excited about. Uh, one of them is not mine. Uh, one of them is. Uh, but before I do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, and, uh, well, uh, check out some of our older videos. We got a lot of them. Check them out and uh, see what we have here on the Night Junkie Podcast. All right. We'll get to the state of the collection right here in a second. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Got a new one in here from my buddy Jock, uh, Jock's Knife. He's over there in Great Britain, and uh, I have received a knife on his behalf. I'm checking it out, and I'm going to send it along to him. This thing is so cool. This is the Elvia V2 from CN uh, Turner CNC. So Turner CNC worked with uh, Ed Calderon, as have many other or numerous other companies, uh, to, to create a version of his Elvia Picol style uh, fruit knife defensive blade. And this Turner CNC version is just incredibly cool. Uh, I had the smaller version of this. I guess that was the V1 on the channel. Uh, also, Jocks, I sent that along to him. That was probably a year or so ago. Um, a smaller package altogether. Uh, this one, this one really, really fits the bill for me. It's it's a very nice size. It's got a big blade, and but not too big. Uh, it ships with two pennies, so you can undo these uh, screws here, and there is a relief cut in the middle. You can stash stuff in there, um, handcuff key or uh, whatever hundred dollar bill all wadded up or something, uh, but. A cool little feature the 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 whole community behind and around the Elvia knife and Ed Calderon and Sneak Reaper Industries and all of that they're very into um, stashing little urban survival uh, tidbits on you. I, I I'm sorry I'm I'm not so into that world that I just use the term tidbit, uh, but handcuff keys. Um, what are those little wires that you can cut yourself out of uh, out of things with and uh, money and tourniquets and what have you obviously you're not going to fit that all in here but uh, stashing those things on your person so if you're kidnapped or find yourself in a really tough spot you have uh, the basic tools you need on you to extract yourself that's that whole community's ethos and i think it's cool i don't i'm not that prepared but i i like that level of preparedness uh, that's where this knife uh, that's the sort of world this knife comes out of of course uh, these are great for just regular uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, utility tasks and just basic cutting. Uh, maybe not the the handiest. It's it's maybe not as handy as some other knives, but you can definitely use this for all sorts of everyday carry tasks. But of course, I mean, it is just a weapon through and through. Uh, ships with this awesome Tracker Dan um, 
style sheath. Now, I'm not uh, sure if the sheath is Tracker Dan. I do know that the clip is. You can see his logo right there. Um, but, I mean, obviously, this is a sheath created for the Turner CNC um, Elvia V2. And the cool part about it is that it is 100% ambidextrous. So uh, you don't have to worry about how your sheath is oriented uh, to, to sheath your knife in any way you want. So this is an incredible knife, really beautiful package. Uh, Turner CNC is now working on his gin knife, which is this incredible uh, double-edged recurve, the one that uh, Lynn Thompson saw at Blade Show 2023 and said was his favorite favorite knife there. I think that was Blade Show West, actually. Um, so I definitely want to get my hands on that. He also makes a, a Bowie knife that's incredible and then an EDC um, clip point blade that that has gotten rave reviews from Tomas over there at Tactical Tavern. So Turner CNC uh, making incredible work and someone you have to really keep a close eye on because the drops come quickly and they are small. So uh, definitely, if you like it, uh, follow him on Instagram and, and keep your eyes peeled on his work. OK, next up is uh, one I'm very excited about having speaking of jock who's elvia that i was just showing off i recently received and sent along a stitch for him and that inspired the acquisition of this stitch let's see if i can do this left-handed this is the stitch ramlock and uh it's just as exquisite as everyone else has said mine is in fluted aluminum uh really really like that aluminum handle it makes a great noise when closing it, you just hear the finality of metal hitting metal. Not that the blade is hitting the aluminum, but it's hitting the, the giant stop pin and it's all resounding through that aluminum frame. And the pockets, the light, the, the pockets that are put in there to lighten up that aluminum uh, make it more resonant. And so it just has a great sound. Sound aside, this knife is <clears throat> one that I kind of didn't want to like in a way when I had jocks, I was like, okay, I'm really glad I experienced this because now I know I don't need to have it, but that didn't turn out to be the case. Uh, I thought I just don't like the uh, handle to blade ratio. It's not even that it's the handle to cutting it, uh, cutting edge ratio. And uh, that was my like Seinfeldian, uh, he, you know, he, she's a low talker, you know, what, what, you know where, you, where you're trying to find the smallest reason to say no to a knife. But um, I just uh, I just couldn't say no to this. And uh, once I had my. Once I had this, the amphibian, it, I kind of felt like I, I just had to have this, especially considering uh, this Microtech uh, Jag I'm on. And I'm, I'm look, I, I have a, a around 15 knives I'm going to try and sell so I can acquire more. <laughs> uh, but that that put aside, uh, the stitch is amazing. It's an amazing knife. Couple of things. Um, OK, so this might be disgraceful, but I'm, I'm going to compare this to a very good Fugazi, a very good ripoff fake. I mean, it is a counterfeit. They even put Microtech's name on it. I got this in a trade and um, as as a, a throw in. Uh, Dave threw this in. Uh, I guess it came to him in a trade and he was passing it along. And uh, just in looking at this and then looking at um, the stitch automatic, there are a couple of things. The first ram lock had that that they changed. Uh, I do like this non deep carry pocket clip better. You're like, that's a fake. But this is what it looked like um, instead of this pocket clip with the giant screws. Um, the screws do get in the way of pocketing and pulling it out um but not i mean not terrible but uh, not a deal breaker but i find myself lifting up the clip just to be safer um one thing that i do love about this clip is how there there is a slot cut in either side of the screw hole so all you have to do is back the screw out and then you can uh, turn it and remove the clip whoops turn it and remove the clip instead of taking the screws all the way out that's kind of cool uh Really, really great action with that ram lock. I'm a big fan of the ram lock. Instead of the Omega Springs, it's a coil spring on a pin that backs into that giant block of metal that engages the tang. A really strong, uh, but also super, super fidgety. Um, I want to show you something. That's enough of this here. <laughs> uh, but I want to show you. Uh, it just occurred to me. The Microtech stitch is, is really the... Uh, 
the uh, Strider SMF walks into a bar and makes big eyes at the Yojimbo. And nine months later comes the Microtech Stitch. I mean, look at it. Look at the holes, the opening holes. You know, it's like you combine those two opening holes, you get something like you get on the Stitch. Look at the blade shapes. You combine those blade shapes with this huge choil and that nearly, uh, well, that flat edge and that worn cliff blade. And, and you combine that, you get a blade shape like that. Uh, look at the handles even. Um, they, they, they kind of uh, take this organic and this blocky and you, you get a blend there. So, I mean, I'm just saying, maybe uh, the Strider and the Yojimbo were getting frisky. Uh, but I love this knife. Uh, and the, the price difference between the aluminum and the G10 is none. And the weight difference is about uh, 0.5 ounces. So about a half ounce. Um, so great, great, great knife. I'm so excited to have this. Uh, however, if I were in a, um, urban survival situation, yeah, this would be a great knife to have for sure. Um, but I'm going to get to what all of that is about, but before I do, uh, I want to mention that we have some great new, uh, t-shirts on offer, not just a knife, a knife, a lifestyle. Uh, this is the latest in Jim's design, uh, journey. I mean, he's been making t-shirt after t-shirt and they're all really cool uh, i i particularly liked the um uh last week's um what do you call it saint patrick's day t-shirt i hope you guys had a great saint patrick's day uh it's the one day a year i'm irish as as most people and this year during lent it fell on a saturday uh, on a sunday which was great because i was allowed to drink and drink i did <clears throat> so uh, check out the t-shirts on the knifejunkie.com slash shop there are pages of them, and they are cool. If you're going to wear a T-shirt, why not have it be knife-themed? That's what I say. All right, 10 great knives for urban survival. And number eight will shock you. Now, I have a couple of stipulations here. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a great knife and would serve you so well in a dire situation. However, I'm thinking about urban survival. And in that, um, I'm also considering knives that are less expensive because you might have to ditch them. The most expensive knife on here is uh, about 150 bucks. Um, and so something that is not going, so something that's light, something that's very capable, uh, whether it's large or small, um, and, and uh, you know, no matter, no matter the size, super capable for its size is what I'm getting at. Uh, it's not heartbreaking to lose or ditch if you have to ditch it for whatever reason, and can be used both defensively and for utility. Um, so these are things that you could throw in your backpack or, or your purse. You know, you know uh, there's one here. There are numerous ones here that my wife could throw in one of her smallest bags and have uh, and have uh, super capability. So uh, those are those are the stipulations here. Uh, pretty much anything in this room would be great for urban survival if you have no rules. But we're taking into account that cities have rules and. Um, you, it's not like you're going to enter into a city uh, that is in chaos. You will be in a city when things turn to chaos. So these are things that you might want to have on you. All right. First up is uh, low hanging fruit. I was just talking about my use of this in uh, the city. And that is the Microtech micro, I mean, the Spyderco micro Jimbo. So this is the small version of the Yo Jimbo. Uh, a knife designed by Mike uh, Mike Janich, who is not only a fighting a knife fighting expert, he's also a survival expert. Um, and so this this knife will do amazingly if you need uh, to cut pretty much anything in your day to day, especially if you live an urban lifestyle. Uh, but if you have to bring it to bear in a defensive situation, uh, that's its bread and butter. Uh, that that straight edge and that thirty degree angle tip. Um, that's more like a 45 on this one, but it, it is, you know, just meant for penetration and slashing. Uh, straight edge blades like this are, are really, really, really great at slashing, probably the best. Um, recurves have their, have their place, as do those S-curve knives and, um, and hawkbill knives. But for overall utility and uh, defensiveness, this is her defensive purposes. Uh, this sort of straight edge is best. And on this, it is small. So this is legal in Chicago of all places. Uh, 
where you know you really are more likely to get into a gunfight than a knife fight i would imagine just from the news uh, no offense to those who, out there who live in that wonderful wonderful city uh but uh, this is this is something you can carry and you can use for utility and defensive purposes it is small this is the most expensive one on the uh, on the list and uh, so if you need to ditch it it's not a huge tragedy for me it would be cuz this has sentimental value it was given to me by the designer himself ooh okay next up this one this one and uh i will say uh, ones like it so this is the cold steel sr1 light okay i chose the light because it's light a eh? because it's just got these um instead of having full g10 slabs with uh steel liners this one has um or i'm sorry instead of just having the full g10 slabs which is heavier than this frn this is just frn and no liners uh and you have uh eight cr13 mov uh, which is light in terms of you know the cost of the steel it's a less expensive steel uh, but one could argue in an urban survival situation maybe better than s35 vn a it's tougher it's a little bit softer easier to sharpen takes an incredible edge and is very um corrosion resistant uh, so this might actually be uh, a better a better blade steel for that purpose i might be wrong about that but something tells me i'm not uh, the handle itself is very light, so it keeps the keeps this large four inch, uh, nine inch overall blade uh, uh, knife in the light zone. Uh, I prefer the Tanto to the clip point, um, not only um, well, just because I think there's a little bit more utility in the Tanto. Uh, even in uh, I would say even in an outdoor situation, I, you never see people using these uh, as. Um, camping knives or outdoor knives why don't people use tantos uh let me know i'm sure i'm sure it has to do with that secondary point but to me that's what that's what might come in handy is that secondary uh front edge incredible penetration power you have very very thick blade stock full thickness right up to the tip and uh just a sturdy as hell build with that triad lock uh i would also say uh you know you could you could carry this in a purse like a woman's light purse uh or you could put something like this, uh, a larger uh, cold steel, one of the five and a half or six inch ones, and drop it in a backpack. And it's nice and light. And really, you have you have the utility of a large fixed blade knife with it. For all intents and purposes with that triad lock, unless you're doing something really, 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 you know, uh, unfolding knife like, you have the utility basically of a large fixed blade with this in a folding package, you know, just doesn't take up as much space. So I say the Cold Steel SR1 Lite uh, is, is a prime example of this, but you could go, uh, you could go with most, uh, you go with that large Luzon, that six inch Luzon, it's 40 bucks or maybe 45 now, but it's, it's inexpensive and it's a great knife and you're not going to care if you lose it too much. Okay. Next up is the Number eight, Sear, uh, from Station Nine Knives. Uh, Station Nine produces these really uh, cool knives at a at a um, at a very sober pace. Uh, so they'll release uh, maybe one or two knives a year, and they're all based on um, urban survival, uh, on uh, French resistance knives from uh, World War One and World War Two, and um, and uh, French fighting knives like uh, like Fred Perrin's knives. And this one is, to me, it is just a great all-arounder. This is one that has ridden in my backpack a lot since I got it. Not displacing my normal backpack knife, just so you know. Ooh, that's in this list, too. Uh, but very, very capable in terms of, uh, in terms of its materials. You've got a, a very nice contoured. Uh, G10 handle slabs over a full tang blade, 1095. <clears throat> Just a great blade steel. But this this clip point is amazing. Uh, it penetrates really, really easily. Uh, so uh, it wasn't something I was necessarily not expecting, but when I uh, punched this through cardboard box, it I was surprised at how easily 
it went all the way up to the nearly to the hilt um with very little with very little uh power behind the thrust and i believe it has to do with the thinness of the blade and that incredible swedge there i mean that swedge really thins out the blade makes a diamond uh, cross section all the way up to about here i mean look at look at where the swedge comes up to uh, and that is very similar to the mac v sog bowie knife uh, that has a very very long swedge coming all the way almost up to the hilt and that gives it a, a dagger like cross section for a, a longer uh section of the forward part of the blade so that just means it's going to be a great uh, thrusting knife uh, but also just look at it you've got a a, a nice four inch length of um, straight edge here and then a nice belly uh, going up to that tip so a great all-arounder if you have the room in your backpack or in your briefcase or in your purse uh, for a knife such as this i i this would be the ideal thing to have on you in an urban survival situation and you know i say urban survival situation this is this is the context i always think of uh you know i i lived in manhattan for eight years with my wife well, girlfriend, she turned into my wife while we were there. But uh, uh, I always thought, I'm on an island. I'm on an island with, like, millions of other people, uh, none of whom, who, you know, they have urban survival instincts, like they can survive in this city here and uh, they'll afford it and whatever, pay the rent and exist here. But uh, they don't have, many of them don't have the outdoor survival skills, myself included. Uh, what would happen if all of the services here and the and the infrastructure collapsed and the bridges and the tunnels are inaccessible how would i build a raft how the hell would i get off of this island um the the roiling uh mass of humanity in the streets like how would i survive that uh so that's the kind of thing i think of in urban so yeah i'm just in here for the day i'm i'm you know i just work here i'm trying to get out you know like if you find yourself in my case now if i found myself in dc there's there's rivers i'd have there is a river i would have to cross to get home uh, if the bridges were out i'd be what the hell what, what would i do so i mean these are the kind of things i think of it's 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 it could get dire like very quickly uh so it's good to have stuff on you right like the guy um in the, the comment he lives up in the mountains he's always got all that stuff on him because he's got cougars that could jump on his back Jeez, man. Uh, so in an urban situation, the, the more you can have, the better. Now, you're caught in an urban situation with a knife like this um, or just in your day to day, I guess I should say you're going to be in trouble. But uh, don't break the law and it's probably not going to happen um, here. I have it set up for CM carry. If you remember CM from from YouTube, he would carry it like this uh, with the handle down and you could just grab it in the reverse grip. And uh, so that's how I have this set up. And when it's set up like this, the handle uh, usually does not extend too far below my winter uh, outer gear. Of course, summer that'll be different, but it, it hangs kind of at this 45 degree angle. I got the the Ranger, uh, Ranger bands on here for grip. And also you can take them off and use them for stuff if need be. Love this knife. I love Station 9. I highly recommend you check out their really cool wares. All right, next up, also from a survival expert, Mr. Doug Ritter, good friend of the show and a good friend of every one of us who loves knives because he fights for our knife rights on a daily basis. And uh, for instance, in my state, which uh, in which it was totally illegal to own or uh, to even own or make or sell or import, export an automatic knife, now I'm allowed to own an automatic knife and conceal it on my person out in public. Thanks to Doug Ritter. Uh, this is the Doug Ritter. This is the Ritter RSK. RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife. Mark V. We know him for uh, the, the Ritter Hogue that we love so much, the Mark I, the RSK Mark I, or the Ritter Griptilian before that, and the Mark III, the big sur uh, the survival fixed blade that's so cool. Doug uh, also created this, and this is a little knife. He used to have it made by CRKT. Now it's made by the same manufacturer in taiwan that created that knife this is the mark five tiny little knife tiny little capable super capable knife uh this is a uh little you can make it as a neck knife whatever it fits in one of these altoid tins this is the size of an altoid tin and by the way i'm totally 
I've been addicted to Altoids for years. I have the freshest breath of anyone you know, uh, except when I don't. Um, so this one, this little guy here, uh, you can use this for any number of things. You can lash it to something, uh, a bigger handle, a stick or something, and make a uh, make it easier to hold on to. Um, you can carry it around your neck as a neck knife. You can wrap it with cord. You can do all sorts of stuff with this little tiny blade. It's shaped much like the uh, the bigger, it's bigger brothers. And what's great about it, it's USP, is its size. It's tiny and it fits in the Altoid tin. Now, what else you can put in there? Um, if, if you're, uh, you know, living a, a more rural lifestyle, you might put fishing hooks in there, uh, whatever, um, uh, fire starting stuff. See, I don't even know. Cause I'm, I am like he said up front, a city slicker. Uh, but for a city slicker, who's, who's, uh, attempting urban survival, what could you have in there? Uh, this is going to sound funny. You could have a little coiled up charger, uh, cable in there. Uh, you could have your Bic lighter in there. Definitely have to have fire. Um, you could have a, uh, a little power bar or something, you know, you, some sort of nutrients in there. Uh, you guys are like, Bob, you'd be dead. You have, <laughs> but my, my point is you can customize, hell, you could have a USB, uh, uh, a thumb drive in there with all of your, um, with all of your vital documents. I mean, whatever it is, you could fit it in this tiny thing, put a ranger band around it, like one of these rubber bands around it, throw it in your, in your backpack or your purse or your whatever. And you could have uh, all your all your essentials in there. A little mini flashlight, uh, a, a you know, a little O light in there. That would be a great thing to build out for urban survival. And of course, you can customize it if you live out in the country and you want to have that in in your. I don't know. I'm sure you can carry around bigger stuff, but you want something small just to keep in the door of your car or something like that. So it's the, it's the Ritter RSK Mark V. It is tiny, but it is capable, and that is the point. No matter the size, it is ultra capable for its size. All right. Next up, this is a cool one. I don't show off much, uh, and it's the Topps uh, FDX 66, and it really just drops in the front pocket, easy as pie, in this beautiful full grain leather sheath. Man, Tops, Tops, and their leather. Um, but you can tell from the handle I've wrapped it with uh, some electrical cord, uh, elect electrical tape there uh, just to beef up the handle a little bit because it's pretty thin. But this is a 1095 uh, Tonto, super capable uh, blade, very uh, thin behind the edges. You can tell from that uh, pretty broad cutting edge there. Uh, very thin. Uh, you, you've you got thrusting capability, you've got cut, cutting capability, and you've got two distinct edges with that Tonto. You have a perfectly circular, uh, nearly uh, complete circle uh, choil there that really encapsulates your finger, uh, your forefinger. You can even hold it in reverse grip like this and have your pinky buried in there and grab this and really power down on it. Um, there is jimping back here and uh, on the handle if you you don't have that tape on I, the tape is temporary i'm thinking i'll, I'll do a jute wrap on this um, and carry it a little bit more because uh, it is nice to have just dropped in the pocket it's a it's big for that so this is this is what i like about this uh 1095 easy to sharpen two edges drop in the pocket defensive utility very thin low profile and light um, and i gotta say it's also just appealing and uh, let's let's just say that that's uh, that's part of it, too. And here you can put it on the belt two ways, horizontally or vertically. Very cool knife. The FDX. Um, if not this, Tops makes a myriad uh, small blades, just a bunch of them. Some of them are thin like that. Some of them are little fatties that you can hold in the hand uh, really easily. Uh, so check them out if you want a small blade. They've they've got them in spades. All right. Next up, the off grid hoglet. This little knife is great. This this appears on a lot of uh, favorite small fixed blade knife uh, lists from our trusted voices of the knife internet. And uh, for good reason. It's got a great uh, carry profile in that it's small, and but it's got a full four-finger grip here. And um, the blade kind of blending into the handle allows for that. So you're, you're kind of up onto the blade with the forward part of your hand. Great jimping there. You've got a full uh, inch and an eighth flat grind there. So like all 
um, off-grid knives. This is an incredible slicer. It just zips through cardboard like it's not there. Um, but this one, uh, unlike some of the other off-grid knives, is, is a little chunkier. You know, most off-grid knives are very, very thin in the bevel. This one is, but it's it, it's a chunkier stock to start. So uh, very durable. Uh, it's D2 blade steel, Cryo D2, they boast here, Cryo D2. Uh, also has that cleaver look with the um, hole up front, like you're going to hang it over a meat cutting board. So I think that's just a visual flourish. Great handle. Everything about this knife is awesome, including the sheath, except the... Uh, I don't know if they still ship it with this. It's kind of a cheesy clip. It's just bent Kydex. It works. It works fine. Uh, but I have never, I, I guess I should put a tech lock on there. Um, I'd probably carry it more. Uh, but the Hoglet, great knife and and also very capable. Uh, fits uh, pretty much anywhere. You can throw it in your bag, your purse, your backpack, uh, your car door. Um, and it's going to do great. Not only that, it would go great in a picnic basket for cutting limes for your mint juleps and for uh, cutting cheese, not cutting the cheese, but just cutting cheese. That's the hoglet from off grid knives. Okay. Next up is more of a category than it is a specific knife. I'm going to put a couple examples here and these are cognitive dissonance knives. Uh, so bright, cheerfully colored knives. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the rat two, uh, this is Pinky Tuscadero, a knife I've had for a long time. Love this knife, given to me by my uh, older daughter uh, back in the day. Here is the uh, the the famous. I used to talk about this knife all the time because I used to carry it in the waistband without exception. This is my Cold Steel Broken Skull in CTS XHP, and the pink handle with the uh, pink snaggletooth MF for waveability out of the pocket or waistband. Um, and here is my main a work around the house painting knife. Uh, that's the Endura in the blue. And th the thing about these knives is that uh, I call them cognitive dissonance knives because the colors are, you know, throw you off. Obviously, they could be used as deadly weapons, but they're tools, officer. They're just tools. Look, it's pink. Um, now, does that really work? Uh, thank God it's untested in my case. Uh, but I developed this theory when I was allowing myself, when I was trying to build a justification for bringing a knife with me overseas. And that was this knife. And uh, I carried, a, I, brought, I brought this knife with me twice to the Dominican Republic. And, and now that I say that out loud uh, at my age with all that I have to lose, um, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified that I did that uh, in retrospect. Don't do that it's probably a really bad idea. You can probably, if you really want to have a knife, you can probably go there and buy a cheap one and, and then get rid of it when you're, but I did it. Uh, and this is what I did. And, and I was thinking, you know, if it, if I got caught with it, uh, not in Dominican Republic, but in the airport, uh, you know, I could say, uh, Oh, I, you know, officer, I didn't know it was on uh, in my job kit or whatever. I don't know. I was stupid. Just don't do that. I'm telling you, don't do that. But that's my whole theory behind this. So in an urban survival situation, um, it's kind of uh, in, in line with the uh, micro Jimbo. You're going to be there before everything happens, before it hits the fan. You're going to be there. Otherwise, you just wouldn't go and you would avoid that urban chaos to begin with. But assuming you're already there and you're walking around day to day with a knife, uh, if it looks bright and cheerful and something uh, possibly unthreatening. I mean, this is obviously kind of threatening. Now I look at it, I'm like, just because it has a pink handle, no one's going to look at it and say, oh, it's pink. But, you know, maybe the rat too, which is bigger than you could carry in Chicago, but uh, with the pink and I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think that it's a risky uh, thing to assume, but if you're going to carry around a large capable folder, why not have it in a uh, Easter egg color um, just to make it look less? Look, it's like this. You're in the in the courtroom and they say, what knife did you have on you? And you said, I had the Kaiser assassin on me, which is a little three inch EDC. They call it the assassin that they might look at the knife. And if it were called the bumblebee, they'd say, oh, it's it's cute. It's it's fine. Um, maybe not. 
So uh, take take your chances with it. But I say if you're going to carry around something big in a non-permissive area, uh, make it brightly colored. All right. I belabored that. Next up, this is the shocker. And yes, it's true. This is a knife much maligned by the Knife Junkie podcast and the Knife Junkie channel and myself. Uh, but it has its place. And here it is. The Gerber Paraframe. The ultimate ditchable knife. Now, why the Gerber Paraframe and not another equally inexpensive knife from a company that you like, Bob? Well, for a, no a couple of reasons. First of all, this one is a very uh, common and easily acquired knife. Uh, you can get it at most Walmarts and uh, um, Targets uh, and um, and Dick Sporting Goods and Lowe's. And what you can get this knife anywhere. It, to its uh, okay what do I, I i dislike it because it ignores all of those things that knife people look for um but what it is is very very sturdy it's it's a it's a thick you know it's a metal frame with a i mean it's a steel frame with a steel blade in it with awful tight action so it's not quick on the draw but once it's open it is sturdy i have to give it that now, the blade steel is, what is it? It's like 420, so it's nothing to write home about. Uh, but um, it has serrations. It has a very good serration pattern. And we're assuming this is not your work knife. Uh, this is not your, you know, your, you're using your knife at work all the time. Well, this is, you wouldn't be carrying this. This is for urban survival. This is for stashing. This is for using. This is for uh, using in a, in a pinch and ditching if you need to. So strong frame, light, uh, capable steel, good serrations, um, very common, easy to find, uh, and not something unfamiliar, I would imagine, to the police officer that might be taking it from you. Uh, so in, in that, I'd, I'd say that this is a great one, uh, ultimately in its, in its capability, but also ditchability. And, and, and I, I, I hesitate to call this a capable blade, but it is, you know, for as much as I, I poo poo it, look at, look at the lock engagement, you know, it makes us knife nerds shudder, but also, you know, for sure that knife is not closing. It's got 100% engagement on that frame lock. Um, by the way, I had a small one of these and I carried it for years as my fifth pocket carry before I got into buying nice, nicer, small blades. And it was actually pretty great. And uh, I ended up giving it to um, a buddy that I work with who's a fisherman and he uses and carries it all the time to this day. So as much as I hate the paraframe, I think it would be really great for an urban survival knife that you can put in your bag, forget about and pull out in, in, in the worst case. And the small one also will fit in one of these, by the way, one of these Altoid tins. The small version of this. All right. Second to last knife here. This is my dedicated backpack knife. It has been for years. So I guess you could say this is a daily carry fixed blade, even though it's not on my person. Uh, this is the SOG Seal Pup in the aftermarket uh, sheath, uh, Kydex sheath. Um, I do have the regular sheath, but it is much heavier and bulkier. So I just keep it in this. Uh, plus, I can wear this in the waistband. Uh, a tried and true uh, knife that Navy SEALs actually carry and use. Uh, I've I've heard accounts and seen. I love watching uh, gear dump or videos from Navy SEALs. I can't remember. Frogman Tactical does some, I think. And these are all the knives I used on deployment. And the Se SOG SEAL Pup always pops up in those lists. Uh, it doesn't have a, a uh, glamorous steel. This is uh, OS 8. Uh, and you know, it's, it's got a, an injection molded handle and I bought it for 40 bucks at, uh, target or Walmart. Uh, you can, by the way, get an, the elite model of this, which has jimping all the way down the back, uh, for scraping and stuff in survival situations. It has a different setup, I think different blade steel, but basically the overall shape of this and, uh, handle of this, uh, is just, it's great for, um, everything. Uh, whether it's fighting or survival, you've got that double peaked uh, Bowie shape. You've got a hollow ground uh, main bevel, super sharp edge here. 
Uh, and then a great serration pattern. I am I'm more and more about serrations these days. Uh, they just prove over time to remain sharp, even when used a lot. And you can count on them when you can't count on the rest of your blade. So I do love the serrations on this. I forgot to mention that about the paraframe. The paraframe comes with serrations too. Uh, so this is a great urban survival knife. And I, I think the, 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 this along with the number eight, the most tactical and combat oriented uh, of this list. Okay, last in the list. Uh, probably the best for any kind of survival, whether you're in an urban environment or what it's known for in a wooded environment. The Mora, in this case, the Mora Companion. This thing is probably the lightest. I don't know. It's about as light as the Micro Jimbo. Um, and, and we all know the Mora's capability. It comes in this great sheath that you can just clip on anything, clip on your belt or whatever. Uh, it's got that great push-off point. Awesome blade. Uh, four inch, uh, uh, this is Sandvik. What is this? Stainless, so it's probably Sandvik uh, 14C28N or something like that, 12C27, something from Sandvik. Uh, but uh, it's got the rubberized handle, but not too grippy, but grippy. Very comfortable handle. Um, you can ride up like this for, for more power behind the blade. Uh, back here, you get full, full grip. It's great in reverse grip. It's almost made, uh, that pommel is almost made for uh, the thumb in mind. So uh, this knife, uh, though it's known for its abilities with that with that awesome Scandinavian grind, that zero edge grind, um, is known for its woodworking capabilities, its, its outdoor survival, um, you know, attributes. But it's also known, um, Ed Calderon mentioned, uh, what a great fighting knife these are. The Moras are not intended as such, but they make uh, outstanding uh, fighting knives. And he's tested these in uh, dynamic um, bio-medium tests, you know, where he has a swinging pig carcass and they're testing out different blades. And these are just awesome. They stay in the hand. They cut incredibly. They penetrate incredibly. And they're low profile. and so I, I have no doubt that in an urban survival situation, having this light, really super capable fixed blade Scandinavian ground Mora in your pack and just having it with you all the time, this would just be a great choice. And it's very non-threatening. Unlike the uh, SOG Seal Pup or the Sear number eight uh, or one of those large folding cold steels, it's non-threatening. So these are my, this is my take on 10 great urban survival knives did number eight shock you did you is it crazy that the paraframe made it on a, on one of my top 10 lists i think it is all right thanks for joining me in this let me know down below if you have any favorite uh knives that you like to carry on you for this type of uh eventuality or let's not call it that let's call it possible situation uh do let me know down below also be sure to join us tomorrow night for thursday night knives where we give away uh the ts175 by tepe designs and uh, two sun knives and uh join us on sunday for a great interview show all right my name is bob demarco uh for jim working his magic behind the switcher i'm saying until next time don't take dull for an answer Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.